Are you ready? Yeah! I want to know, is everybody ready? Yeah! All right, here we go. Hey, now. Everybody yeah. <laughs> Bobby back. And the difference is doing it. All right, look. I'm stoked for this one. I mean, I'm really stoked because other basement disc dyers, it's coming back with me. It's been, it's been several months since we've had our last installment of other basement disc dyers, but we're resurrecting this bad boy with a doozy. <laughs> a doozy. See, the idea behind this little series when I started it was to bring all of you out there in the TDD army some new methods, techniques, and styles via other basement disc dyers other than old man Bob Cobb that are out there just killing it. I mean, killing it. So I reach out to some of these people. Sometimes they get back to me, other times they don't. But here's the reason why I'm really stoked. It is because today's instructor has been plucked directly out of the T. Diddy Army itself in the form of General Greg Renfro, which, yeah! <laughs> Now, if you follow us on the Facebook side of the universe, or you're in groups like Disc Golf Dyers, you, you're probably familiar with General Greg Renfro's work, because I posted some of it, he posts some of it there, and look, if you've seen it, it's caught your eye. I know, I know it has, because this is masterclass work. I mean, masterclass. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. While I finish up talking here, I'm just gonna start to run a reel now of some of the discs that Greg's done, some of his artwork so that you can check it out. All right, look, I don't have the disc that is in the tutorial today. I'm sorry to say that to you, to hold and to show up and all that kind of stuff. That disc is in the lucky hands of my main man, Scott Simposky. I tried to steal it from him, it didn't work, but here's what I do have, okay? A couple weeks before that, Greg sent me this bad boy that he died for me. I mean, come on, it looks like he stole this thing out of a disc dying museum. And then, <laughs> <sighs> I love it. Now, while Greg may have been introduced to disc dying while watching some of our videos, he has unquestionably evolved this art form, developing his own rather breathtaking style, <laughs> which fortunately for all of us in the T. Diddy Army, he has decided to share, which... Mm. Now do you see why I'm so stoked? Okay, so here's what I've done. I have packed like three plus hours of footage into a concentrated 16 minutes of your masterclass in how to hand paint with dyes. And hopefully we can all level up to this status someday. But if nothing else, he's gonna share some of his techniques with us and we can know in watching it that it's out there, right? This is some of the stuff that's possible if you just keep doing it and oomph some of your inspiration into this plastic. So strap in or strap on or however you hold on to something, I'm gonna do the same thing. And let's let's do let's do this one together. And then I'll catch you on the other side. Alright? Mm, yeah! Alright, here we go on this process video for painting dye on a disc and the designs. I can see this disc design, that's where we're headed. There might be some flare or something on it. So, getting started, I've got the disc. The disc is prepared, it's a star plastic. I've wiped it and then I, I also washed it really well with soap and water. Uh, I think that's an important step to do the soap and water wash. That just keeps any kind of oils or that kind of thing that could make the dye feed up from being on there. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll get the, I can see the old stamp impression. I'll get it squared up and then I'll take the design and I'm gonna lay it on the disc. I've got this design created roughly the right size for the disc. I'm going to get a little piece of masking tape and we're going to tape it in place. The next thing I'm going to do is I've got this piece of carbon paper here. I'm going to insert the carbon paper. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to transfer, I guess, sort of just the essentials of this design. So I make sure I get things where I want them on the disc. 
there's some key elements that, that are important to get right, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure those are right. I use this. This is a uh, burnisher that came with my Cricut. Basically, I'm just gonna kind of lay out this design. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. I'll take a peek and see where we're at. I think that looks pretty good. That, that gets me about what I need, I think, for to get started. So what I do with this image now, so I have it in front of me the whole time, is I'll hang it up here. Yeah, it's kind of kind of getting in the way. Let me see if I can find another spot for it. I'll just put it up in the back here where I can see it. Because it's important that I reference this artwork often so I don't get out of whack, so to speak. So in the design, there was these white electrical rays coming out. One here and one here. And then there's a bright light up here. There was some exhaust, I guess, or lack of better words, coming out here. For that, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'm going to use some glue and mask these areas off where I want that to stay white for now. I'm gonna do that glue mask first and kind of let that dry. And I'll just grab a brush. It doesn't really matter which brush for this too much, something small. And I'm gonna kind of just paint this on here. The next thing I'll do with this, I'm gonna put a spin die around the edge. And the reason I like to do that is because when I paint these, sometimes the, they get very liquidy when I'm throwing the dye on it. And if they run down the side, sometimes they'll seep around the edges. It doesn't look very good. So I'll do a quick spin die on it, you know, probably somewhere in, you know, just right on that, along that edge there and just kind of make myself a frame to work in so I can kind of keep in those boundaries as I work on it. Okay, I've got the disc centered up. This is what I'm gonna be using on it, is this quick coat worm dip to do my spin. All right, and that's really all I need for now. So as I'm painting, I've got a place to stop. All right, that's the spin. I'm going to start with the, start to build up some of the fire colors. Some of the stuff here in the front and through here, there's some really bright kind of fire. We'll start with the chartreuse along there. Um, one thing to note is where the carbon is, it will resist the, the dye. So there will be a point when I get this kind of basically laid out, I'll go and I'll wash off the carbon. Uh, Magic Eraser works great for getting the carbon off. It comes right off without any effort at all. But I want to get everything kind of re, you know, laid out. And some of this area developed, you know, where the glue, glue mask, you know, while I'm laying out some basic shapes. You see these jars over here on the left? So this is acetone in this jar. This is alcohol. I use denatured alcohol. I marked these A, L, R, and B because this is going to be my red and yellow tones alcohol to blend with. And then this will be my blacks and blues and those darker colors. With that, I'm going to get busy here. And during this part of the process, I usually work pretty fast. I don't not really, I'm just kind of getting some basic colors down on the, on the disc. Some of this is a little more, has some smoke in it, so I'll, I'll lay out some, I'll let the dye kind of cool up a little bit and, and make some kind of smoke sort of shapes. And it's like fiery smoke. The alcohol to, to blend it a little bit. You can see it, it does blend with alcohol okay as well. Even though it's acetone based warm dip, the alcohol will, will blend the colors. As you can see, I'm starting to develop this sort of an orangish. You know, it needs to be darkened up a lot, but 
to get the idea of what's going on here. What I'm hoping for is when I hit this with UV lights later on, this whole thing will look like it's on fire. Um, that was all worm dip that I was using there. I think it'll, you can see how it's gonna, it's gonna become fire there. I'm gonna get some eye dye out. So I'm still gonna try to keep this line here so I can kind of keep the, the tripod put out in the background. I want it to be more blue. So I'm gonna get some of this blue on there. I want to try to get this sketch off of here as soon as I can because with the sketch still on there, there's always some of it that's not getting dyed and later on will be a problem. It's important with this to get your brush strokes, to have your brush strokes go the right direction because it shows in the end. I think I need maybe some red with this black. The red's really strong. There we go, that seems to be better. A little more black in with it. And I'll blend these colors on the bits. So you get this kind of on the fly blending of color red than I wanted it to be, but we can, it's going to be really almost black, so. You'll notice I do sometimes, and it works for me, is I'll get my brush in both colors, so I have like a mix of the two colors on the brush already. These are just like some highlights on the edges of the, of the tripod. Just picking up some light from the fire. I'll probably just go down these edges too with some yellow. Just to make them where they have some reflection of the fire on them. think. No, it doesn't, it doesn't look like much right now, but I think it's ready for a rinse so I can get the sketch off of it and then I'll keep continuing to develop shapes here. All right, I'm going to go give this a wash and then uh, kind of see where we're at and decide what to do next. Just real quick, I just wanted to so I did, a, did rinse off the sketch, and you can kind of see now what we're working with. It looks like the glue mask did its job, um, and I think we're all set to continue and start putting in more details and just start building up some more depth. So I just wanted to do a quick... UV reaction I'm looking for. Zoom in on the disc a little bit and see if we can see what's going on there. I think this is exactly what I was looking for here.
something I should mention, I guess, is there's a lot of times a buildup of dye, kind of a residue that probably two or three, maybe four times during the process, I'll go and do a good scrub on the disc to get rid of any of that, that sort of film or residue that's left from pushing the dye around on the disc. Anyway, I'm kind of reaching the home stretch here. I'm gonna start doing some, some detail work on this. We'll just see where it goes. Using just acetone to move some of this stuff around, some of this orange, and make the shapes a little bit better to match up with the design. Create some stuff in here. I'm at the point of contemplating whether this thing's complete or not. I think the answer is yes. I think it's, I think the uh, painting part is done. Uh, the next thing I'll do is clean up the spin and maybe put a little bit of a different color spin outside of that. Maybe the yellow or orange to accentuate it. Anyway, I think we're very close and do a little spin die on there and see what we got. It's the completed disc. Bends on it. I'll give it a quick rinse just to rinse off any extra dye that's sitting on there. I think she's done. All ready to go. That's it, boys and girls. Did I tell you so? I told you so. I hate saying that. I love saying I told you so. <laughs> I told you so. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. That edition of Other Basement Disc Dyers starring the TDD Zone General Greg Renfro and his methods. I've already thanked uh, Greg personally several which ways, but one more big collective thank you from the whole TDD Army. Greg, Thank you for sharing that. You're a total stud. And man, I just can't wait to see your next disc. <laughs> mm, stud, thank you. Okay, look, we've got a couple more other basement disc dyers like crammed right up in the pipeline. And pretty soon we're gonna be taking you over some more new turntables, not these same stickers that you see over Old Man Cobbers all the time. And look, if you're one of those other basement disc dyers and you got something like awesome that you want to share, hit us up. We'll make, we'll make something happen. That's what we, you know, that's what we, that's what we do around here. And with that, our time has come to an end for this day. I hope you really enjoyed that. <laughs> but until we see you the next time, <clears throat> Oh. Heartbreaker. Oh no. <laughs>